So what is going on everybody, my name is Mehul and in this video I want to discuss an interesting topic and that is how to create simple websites. It's not how to create websites, it's how to create simple websites. Now as developers and engineers and programmers, a lot of time we just forget that there are very simple ways and very uh, you know non-tech people friendly ways of creating stuff as well, right? Back in the days in when PHP was the cool kid around the town, you know, you would just deploy, a, upload a single file using FTP and you'll be done for the day. Right now you have all sorts of CI, CD, building, build process, optimizations and all that stuff happening just for a simple Jamstack thing. So in this video, I want to focus more on how you can create simple deployment workflow and simple websites for small medium enterprises for example take example of your local shop your local computer repair shop or barber shop which wants to get a website so things like these right so first of all why would you want a simple website just like i discussed that your local business for example if it is a computer repair shop or if it is a barber shop they don't need to hit a million visits a month they will not be hitting a million visits two million visits a month so they don't need to be infinitely scalable right so that means you can cut down corners on a lot of things both in terms of technology and in terms of pricing then just like i said because they would not be hitting that much scale that means they will not be getting that much traffic that means you can plan out how much bandwidth and you know how much restrictions on how much things uh, the limits you want to play in if you are a freelancer who's creating a website for a client then also you can just get a rough idea of um, you know the market size which they are looking at not everybody's going to open their business to the internet a website deployed on internet does not mean that it is intended to be used by everyone right because let's say if you are uh, new delhi based and you have a repair shop here somewhere then of course it is non-servable for somebody browsing from germany right there's no really point there's no real point as well then of course if you have a limited uh geographic area then obviously your cost would also be less and much more predictable because you know instead of going for pay as you go plans on cloud and you know where things can scale up and down and your cost may vary you can have fixed allotted stuff to you which is both cheaper for you as well as for the provider and you can you know of course have all the benefits of uh, static and dynamic walls here as well because this is like a mini version um of what you can do later on so it, it's it's sort of like perfectly built for you if you're a small medium enterprise version and then finally, it's easier for a non-technical person to later on manage as well, right? Because you as a developer, you as a programmer, even if you have this as a project, as a freelance project, you can just hand off this thing once and for all to that particular person and just show them how to make their way around. They might need to edit code a little because we will not be using a, you know, website builder sort of thing in this one but at least they will have access to email accounts and they will have access to databases and php my admin all by themselves imagine if you want to have you know a database deployed on a digital ocean droplet you would probably need to teach them ssh and maybe like connecting through a sort of a sort of a gui client through an application if something goes down you know there's all all sorts of headache in that for a non technical person so how do you build this website well these are just a few pointers i'll show you an example real quick which i just came up with very quickly uh using a template so you use html css javascript obviously for front end now in this case php is also fine you know people like to throw a lot of uh comments on php it's bad it's that it's that but if you're going for a shared hosting sort of thing where you get that typical cpanel access php is the one language which i believe would be supported across all such platforms right and if you have just a couple of dynamic pages you know contact us form 
or you know some sort of listing which reads from a database and you have built you have built you are building it for a small medium enterprise it is more than enough right you don't need the <clears throat> node.js io concurrency speed performance gains or you know the latest state of the art golang uh, just speed and all that stuff you don't need that right let's be practical here if you're getting a 200 300 visits a day in that case as well php is a very scalable in terms of those people uh, a solution right and it's easier to code and if you have secure it that is also a must requirement so that's good so this is a good tech stack then i will say use lighthouse for performance like you know once you have created the website make sure your website is performant that mostly includes uh just minimizing the amount of javascript and css which you are using externally minimize the image sizes use services like tinypng.com or maybe like others i don't know i just use tiny png mostly so do a little bit of analysis of performance right because that will go a long way then you should also make sure that your website is accessible to some degree right it should not be like not accessible to any screen reader or any person at all with accessibility features on so lighthouse will help help you in that but you should just make use of that make take care of that as well and finally make sure your website is responsive right because if you are getting clients in a local area they probably would be using all sorts of devices and of course that applies to everybody but you get the idea it should be working on mobile phones and it should be working on tablets so this is like a sort of a checklist which you should take care of all right so now let's come to deploying this website so before actually deploying let me just go ahead and show you what exactly our website is going to look like so this is the website which I came across, uh, you know, just this landing page and customized it really quick. And uh, this is a perfect example for a local business in your area, right? If you're freelancing, if you want to develop websites for them, this is how you're going to do it, right? This is obviously a very simple single page. You might have multiple static pages, but, you know, local business, some sort of headline, you know, some description of what services they offer. Uh, this happens to be a you know imaginary computer repair shop from code dam um, a video for repairment you can just embed it and then finally a little bit of dynamic activity you can either have a contact form or maybe like just a field to call you right call you back so you want to make this function dynamic as well as uh, host a complete small website and make sure your cost is much much less right as as a business owner so how do we do that so to do this to host this to make this dynamic form work make this website work we're gonna make use of the sponsor of the video hostinger which i spent a few days with and i have found that it is pretty much the cheapest option you can get in the industry right now for hosting simple web pages and you know simple php scripts databases at a low scale right so if you take a look at their plans this is uh you know you can think of this as less than a dollar i cannot really switch currencies here otherwise i would just show you or maybe i could let's see so if you go down here you can see it's about a dollar right so it's a dollar a month the uh, cheapest plan they have and they allow you to have a single website 10 gb storage this is actually a lesser bound right this is a lower bound because i'll tell you they give you 100 gb bandwidth right 100 gb bandwidth means 100 times 1000 approximately megabytes of bandwidth and if you divide that by 10000 you're gonna get approximately 10 mb per request right per session or per user so that is a lot of data transfer right if you do you play your cards right if you optimize your website and all that stuff you can squeeze it i mean you can even squeeze it till 100 200 kilobytes but you know in worst case even if it is one megabyte per visit then also you get 100k visits right here assuming that you do not have any uploads or anything like that going on so even for one usd one dollar per month uh that cost that'll cost you like 12 dollars a year you're gonna have 
basically the whole setup for your uh, business which can operate and afford up to 100,000 visits a month which is a lot right you probably is not you're probably not using hostinger or you know this cheapest plan if you are receiving that much traffic but anyway if you shift it to india the prices are even cheap right this is actually less than a dollar if you compare the exchange rates so that's that's much better for uh, indian audience so i'm gonna make use of this plan this particular plan premium web hosting and i'm gonna show you how we can deploy this very simple shop which i created so before we do it let's just go through a quick summary of what we intend to do in this sort of deployment we're going to be making use of the hostinger which is the sponsor of the video to create and host this website we're going to be using their manned services like you know email box email inbox and databases and ssl certificates you don't really have to worry about them even as a developer and as a business owner as a developer you know if you are using let's say five dollar digital ocean droplet then you have to configure the let's encrypt cert bot and you have to make sure it renews automatically so there's this this sort of headache right uh, you can obviously use cloudflare in front of it and then use the ssl certificates from cloudflare but you know you get the idea that there's that hassle of things but if you go to manage services and you know if you're paying like less than a dollar a month then that stuff gets taken care of automatically ironically that that is lesser the price more the service but anyway uh we're going to be taking a look at ssl that is like a, a good standard metric now for websites every website should be https email addresses and optionally website availability alerts if you want to set that up and seo stuff so let's do that all right so first things first this is the source code very simple website i did not do nothing in the template just changed the text and created this very simple script in php which will work thankfully out of the box on hostinger um so we just have i decided to create a database earlier but instead decided that you know it's it's better that we email the person directly instead of adding a record to it so this form at the bottom which you saw is linked to this page which just emails you every time there's a new inquiry right so you can just respond there so that is something we do with the help of a little backend from php all right so let's start first of all when you sign up for any plan you would be able to log in like i will be so once you log in i'm just gonna add my credentials here and once you log in you will also get an option to link a domain you know buy a domain if you want or maybe if you choose the the other plan which is the central plan you will get that one for free so once you link the domain it might take some 12 14 hours to complete but once you do that you can first thing is set up the ssl certificate right so i'm just gonna go click on the setup thing code down dot shop very well so I own this code down dot shop domain now and uh, you can just set up install and boom that's done I mean it clearly looks much much better than SSHing into the instance and configuring uh, you know the let's encrypt cert bot for a non-technical person right I'm not saying for a technical person it's not it's uh, difficult you can have automated scripts and all that stuff for that but this is much much better right in terms of user experience so now if you go to code down dot shop it will be https but anyway we will not do that first we're going to go to manage and we're going to go down a little right here inside the email accounts first and create an email account so i'm going to say let's say orders at the rate code down shop dot shop and a little password for this and once you create this email account they also create a managed email service for you right so now you can as a non-tech person you just have to come to that email section click on this email and you will be landed into your custom inbox which is your brand name right so you can ask anyone to email you on orders at the rate code down dot shop so that's it if you are using DigitalOcean, for example then i don't know you have to configure 
For example, you have to go to zoho.com or you know any other free email service provider first of all. Configure the MX records. Just make sure the DNS records are updated properly. Uh, probably need to configure a couple of more DNS records for uh, the, I don't know, I'm not really in the email business, but I do know that there is some SKPF. I, I don't remember exactly, but there are some records which are needed in order to establish the authority of your domain so that they don't land in spam or something. So all that stuff is taken care of if you make use of something like this and you are in the inbox. So I'm just gonna go ahead and change this email from test to orders, right? Orders, why did it paste control orders? <laughs> That's funny. I don't know, <laughs> anyway. So once we do that, what we have is a custom email for us and a website which we have not deployed yet. So let's go to files and files manager. And this is, you know, typical back in the day stuff. You can do this with FTP as well. You can do this with their inbuilt file manager as well. I'm gonna open this folder right here and you can see we already have a few files. I have actually deployed this once, but what you would ideally do is probably just delete this stuff and upload files inside your public underscore HTML, right? If you have ever done PHP, you know that PHP, the usual path of serving PHP is something like htdocs either with a with a sort of the stack which you choose or public HTML. So I select these four files, which are these four files, you know, index.html, iPhone, and our CSS file. And that is pretty much it. Once you do that, upload it because PHP is interpreted, it's not compilation and you don't need to start servers and everything because most of the websites just like a saw shared website support php out of the box so once you do that you are good to go let's see if we can visit codedam.com not really codedam.com but codedam.shop and you can see we are live right you can also sh switch to https and you're gonna see that it makes use of let's encrypt i guess by default I don't exactly know if they are using Let's Encrypt or not. Yes, they are, right? So they're using Let's Encrypt. So that's fine. You can see we are live on our website. And just to test, let's see if we have our orders at the red code damn dot shop open. I can go ahead and write my number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Call me. And there you go. We will call you shortly. That's it. And if you head over to your inbox, refresh it. You're gonna see that you automatically get this new query customer number one two three four five six seven eight nine. Now the reason this works out of the box because you know I have personally worked with sites like these as well, which are you know shared hosting sort of PHP based websites, and they just they just take care of a lot of stuff under the hood. You know your SMTP server is configured when they are running PHP, so you don't really have any pain at all. So that is why you can just make use of the regular PHP mail function and they will make sure that it delivers just fine. And you can just compose or maybe like, you know, just if you want to send somebody an email, you can do all sorts of features. Obviously you can also have databases linked here, just like I told you that I was trying to use database initially. So you can create databases, you can enter the PHP my admin sort of interface and you will be good to go, right? This is your typical PHP my admin thing. Or maybe like if you want, we can just create a new orders table here. Orders, orders. You know, you can create a database, you can create user password, and pretty much just make use of this information directly here in order to authenticate, right? And just work out of the box. And if you go ahead and do enter PHP my admin, you get that very familiar interface if you have ever used ZAMP or LAMP or any, any sort of tech stack. So now you can go ahead and create a table, order a list. For example, go ahead, you know, regular stuff. I mean, a lot of non-tech people would also be able to, non-coding people would also be able to work with this interface. So that is pretty much it for building your very simple business with a PHP-based website, hosted or hostinger with the SSL certificate, email address, and database as well if you want. So that is all for this video. 
I'm going to see you in the next one really soon.